Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. You know, got a question yesterday in the comments. I saw you, and I've been getting this question a lot, but I didn't know how to title this. So when you think about this, keeping the hope alive, dealing with rejection, all these is worded different ways. Um, are your standards too high? I see a lot of women sometimes saying, Tony, you know these women are gonna be single if they take your advice, if they listen to what you're talking about, dealing with these guys today, they're gonna be single. And that's a lot of our problem. A lot of us settle. We settle for less than what you deserve, but I've come to realize that when you set your standards and you refuse to settle for less, I got a quote that went viral, that's talking about knowing your worth, knowing your worth and refusing to settle for less. When you do that, life gives you exactly what you set out for. So you got to understand this. I want to help you understand the science behind a man rejecting you because this is what you got to realize. Sometimes, as you've heard, rejection is protection. And you may have to, especially women dating today. And, and to be honest with you, a lot of men dealing with this as well because society as, as a whole is going down in the sense of the Bible talks about being weaker and wiser. And to me, what it means is, what it means is when you have all this technology, so you got all this technology, you could do so much stuff. You got smartphones, but smartphones make you dumber people because of all of the apps and all of the things that you have at your disposal, you become glued to social media and glued to Netflix, Hulu, Apple, you got Apple TV, now you got Disney Plus. Everybody and their mama got a streaming then look how many reality shows we got. So what happens is we produce this society where everybody wants everything instantly because your news is instant on the popular page, on the Twitter feed, your news is instant, your food is instant due to a microwave and takeout and uh, delivery. Everything comes fast now because of the desperation in dating, a lot of people going to dating apps. So now I, I've never been on one, so I don't know if you slight, uh, swiping left, swiping right, up, down, front, backwards, but now all you gotta do is swipe, send a message. A man could meet 70 women in one week on one of these dating apps. I'm, I've coached so many women. Somebody said they own uh, Tinder. Somebody said they own Bumble. Somebody said they own Hen. Somebody said they, I've heard so many dating apps. I'm like, what in the world? But all these people going to, in our world, wanting things instant, instant gratification. How fast can I get it? So this is what you have to understand. The higher your standards, the better you are but you got to know the difference between standards and preferences so what i talked about in my video yesterday if you missed it was the title of it um i can't remember the title but just go to my main page click on on youtube click on videos and then look at my most recent select the newest and the one from yesterday i cannot remember that own title what i was talking about dating oh let him earn you or something like that let him earn your love or something like that listen to that and what you have to realize when you have standards of you're not coming in my house we're not sleeping together you're not kissing me you're not feeling and rubbing on me you're not those are standards because it's your body it's your body it's your safety letting somebody come in your place you taking precautions so those are standards. Now, see, preferences is things that have nothing to do with morals, values, belief system, safety, personal health. Preferences is, oh, I want them to be six foot four. Or I want them to earn $100,000 or more. Or I want them to have 
uh, blue eyes. Oh, I want them to have olive skin. Oh, I want them to have a long beard. Oh, I want them to have braid. Those are all preferences. So when you get into preferences, now you're going to be struggling and suffering for, for no reason, for no good reason. But your standards, what you have to realize is when you have standards, like it's people, I, people email me every day about me promoting their product in one of these videos. What you see me promoting these videos? You see me talk about my mentor.life, which is my tech project. You see me talk about Tony Gaskins Academy.com. You know why I ain't talking about this other stuff? Because the stuff they asking me, it does not relate to my brand, to my audience. I'm like, how y'all even got my email? Emailing me about this. And some of them offering $1,500 to just mention something. You may say, well, $1,500 some good money. No, I got standards because it gotta make sense. I ain't doing this for the money. Yeah, I wanna be paid for my work, but it has to make sense. And that's what you got to realize. Yeah, you want a husband. Yeah, you want a wife, but it got to make sense. See, when you have standards, like for, for example, one of my standards is I can't be with no cursing woman. How many women curse? How many women curse? I was on Twitter. I don't really read tweets. Sometimes I just do one little swipe because I follow so many people on Twitter because I just did the little follow who follow on you thing. So I probably follow 50,000 people on Twitter. But I seen, uh, when I went to the home page, I seen two tweets, back to back. One was a lady saying, my future husband probably out there watching me um, act a fool on here. Hey, please forgive me, I'm just joking, come here baby. And then uh, uh, the tweet right up under it was another woman saying, I just talk aggressive ASF which you know y'all know what that means i just talk aggressive as asf but that ain't who i really am you know that's just how i come off and what i see all the time is women apologizing for their nasty mouth potty potty mouth uh loose booty you know no manners being ignorant arrogant immature i see women apologizing all day my man, probably my future husband, dear future husband, I know you watching me and I'm acting like a thought, I'm acting a mess, but this ain't who I really am, come get to know me. And I'm like, just, I, I, if I was in the dating world, me not drinking, getting drunk, smoking, cursing, uh, wanting to do things God way, man, I'd be single as a dollar bill. You hear me? Cause it's so, Everybody named Mama curse. A lot of these women today on hookahs, all on hookahs, uh, black and mild, we smoking like a chimney, drinking like a fish. And then a lot of the women today, if if a man don't want to sleep with them, now nah, all of a sudden, girl, I think he gay. Girl, he must be. Girl, he must like men. Girl, he don't want this. Girl, he must be. And so that's the women mentality today. So so even out here, a good man can't even find no good woman because people have different standards. So a good woman may, a woman may think she a good woman. I remember hearing, I remember so many women telling me, you know, be on a coaching session and just talking, 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 and you know, this way back in 2010, 2011, when I first start to blow up on Twitter and all these different celebrities and like um, influencers and people like that started hiring me. And I remember talking to so many women in that industry and I would hear all the time, I know I'm a good catch. I know I'm a good catch. I'm like, catching what? So catching some balls like a first baseman what are you catching? Because if from what I'm hearing, you ain't catching nothing but bats and balls. So who is looking for that? Hey, you sleeping with somebody every week. What? Where do good catch come in? But it's so many people walking around thinking they are good catch. 
And I'm like, ain't nobody trying to catch that, what you passing out. And that's what you have to realize is, is people with standards who is waiting to meet somebody with standards, but because of the masses, because of what's going on in the world, because of the microwave society, because of instant gratification, guess what? People struggling. So, but you have to embrace it. You got to enjoy it. I had to shift my mind. I enjoy turning down these companies coming to me with their advertising offers. I enjoy, I get 50 million of them a day, 50 a day coming advertise saying can you advertise on your facebook then other ones saying can you advertise on your youtube other ones saying can you advertise on your instagram and nope 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 just uh uh you got to have standards and what you have to realize about these standards is it is never rejection it's never rejection it's you are not choosing them the, the lady who wrote the comment she was saying how, you know, she mentioned like three different guys and like one guy, you know, she told him he can't come to her place. Another guy, she told him he can't, she can't go to his place. Another guy, she told him she can't sleep with him. And each one of the guys kind of went off on her, called her immature, told her she acting like a high school, all this right there. Guess what? A man who does that, you got to be happy about that. You can't you can't get down on that. You got to be like, yes, yes. You you got to be happy to see, let me see how fast I can run this man off. Let me see how fast I can run this woman off. You need to be, if you could get them gone in a day, hey, you winning. You winning because now you're not wasting your time with bums. Now you're not wasting your time with grown boys and grown girls. Now you able to just keep it moving like, don't ever consider lowering your standards. It was a lady, I, I deleted old raggedy comment because she talking about, oh, you know these women gonna be out here single listening to you because I was with a man and he and I slept with him after uh, three months and he wanted to marry me after three months and then we got together and then he then we broke up and so she telling her whole story Man, hush ain't nobody finna be out here on their bike because they scared of losing somebody that ain't that ain't what i'm pushing no you stay off your back and if he wanna if he wanna leave let him leave if she wanna leave because she think you like men because you don't want to sleep with her let her leave and you you tell him uh, here i bought you a pair of open toe sandals so you could kick rocks in them that's how you got to do these people. You cannot come down off of your standards for somebody else in patience. Because guess what? They only want you for one thing. If, if somebody will leave you because you don't want to have, because you have decency and self-respect and you take precautions like not letting a stranger come in your house, or not going to a stranger house, if they wanna leave you for that, all they wanted you for is to have you on your bike. That's all they wanted, to have you on your bike. You gotta understand that and, and clap it up. Yes, got rid of another one. Yes, let me see how fast this next one gone. And, and as soon as they ask you to do this, do that, nope. Unfortunately, I cannot, I don't feel comfortable coming to someone's house um, this early. You don't have to say we need to go on 10 dates before I come to your house. That's just a you know, barometer. That's just a, a little guideline I gave you for you to have in the back of your mind. You don't have to list that out, but you simply could say, I don't feel comfortable coming to somebody's house this soon. Or, I don't feel comfortable having somebody in my house this early. And let them say what they want. Oh, you immature. Oh my goodness. you. So we don't went out. We don't went on five dates already. You ought to know me. You ought to know me better than that, now. Nah. It's like, uh, excuse me, sir. It, it it takes some people a year, two years to show their true colors. You know, a serial killer ain't showed his colors right away. His, his teachers didn't know that. It took him 
25, sometimes 30, 40 years before that came out of him. And he's been the same person his whole life, but he wait till now to where he want to go on him a spree. Come on now. Hey, don't rush nothing. You hear me? And this is what you have to realize. I remember, and I'm going to share it from my side of the business, from what I do in business. So many people come to me, promote this, promote this, promote this, promote this. I say no, no to everybody. And then here go one. Finally, one came. Everybody been off me, 1500 3000 5000 this, this. Finally, one came and said, we want you to be in this campaign. And you know what they said? What they end up? Uh, they said $10,000 a day. It's going to be a two-day shoot. I said, nah, 20000 Nah, let's start at forty. They came back and said, okay, we're going to do 75000 For the same 20000 that they was about to pay me to be a part of this campaign, they said, we're going to do... 75,000. That's that's what having standards. If I didn't have any standards, oh, $10,000 a day for the for the video shoot, uh, for the commercial, $10,000. Oh, okay, yeah. Ooh, wee. But if I didn't have standards, no. What you got to understand, you getting a brand. What you got to understand, you getting an uh, influence. You got to, you getting somebody who take themselves serious. I ain't twerking online, okay? When I talk, people, certain people listen because they know I ain't about them games. You hear me? I'm not a snake oil salesman. So you could pay the snake oil salesman that, but you're gonna have to come, you're gonna have to come better if you come into me. That's the same energy you got to have in the dating world. What you got to realize when you go into this dating world, what you got to realize is you a brand. You got to realize you bringing more to the table. You got to realize that if a person gonna be with you, they're going to have to elevate their game. You can't go in and stoop to somebody level just out of desperation and frustration, thinking scarcity minded. No, you got to go in there and say, listen, this who I am. This what I bring to the table. You could bring a table to my table or we not going to be able to sit down and converse because you're not coming to my table with no appetite to have me on my back and you ain't brought nothing to the table. So that's what you have to understand. And that's the energy you got to have. Because here's the thing. Men, men, uh, men slick. And I'm going to speak from a male perspective. Men, when we are grown boys, we going out there. And a grown boy is posing as a grown man. He dressed like a grown man. He drive like a grown man. He talked like a grown man. He looked like a grown man. But you have to really listen to his mindset. You got to hear his motives. So to know if, that he's a grown boy. So when he's talking about, hey, you know, let me come over to your place and we can just cook in, cook in, you know, hang inside and, and, and cook. And on the first date, second date, third date. I don't know you, man. You could be Ted Bundy, nephew. Man, you could... What? I don't know you from the man on the moon. And you talking about coming coming in my place where I live? That's when you know he a grown boy. Because a grown man, not even expecting that. A grown man is trying to give you your space and trying to help you protect your headquarters because he wants you to have a peace of mind. A grown boy don't even want to look like no little predator. He don't want to look like he's preying on you. He, A grown man, I mean a grown man, don't want to look like he's preying on you. He, a grown man, wants you to feel like he's praying for you, not praying on you. You hear me? But see, the grown boy, he going to try to rush you to get in to do what he want to do. He trying to rush you to get to where he wants you to be at. So, hey, let me come on in now. And hey, let's let's you call you come to my place. He trying to kiss you on the first day. He trying to grab boot on the second day. He trying to get you on your bike on the third day. The reason why is because he's empty. See what you got to realize it's more empty men than it is full men. So what you have to understand with everything go if you go on uh indeed. If you're looking for a job and you go on Indeed.com, that, and that's not an advertisement. I'm just saying because that's why I post my job offerings when I'm looking for somebody. 
And speaking of, speaking of, let's say I'm looking for for a, 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 to hire somebody. Man, listen here. I put an application on Indeed.com. I will get 400 applicants. Do you hear me? And after going through the first 50, I'm drained. Cause it be it, the applicants, you know, they could do voice memos and they could do little interviews on there that you could put in there. And I'm listening to the interview. Yeah, you know, I know you're looking for a computer, you know, for a, a online computer assistant. Well, you know, I have cataract in both eyes, so I can't see the screen. But if you give me an opportunity, I'll I'll be the best computer reader you ever known. And then the next one. Well, yeah, I'm on a, a offenders list, and uh, you know, I I was a a woman, now I'm a man. This is literally, but uh, you know, and yeah, I got a long rap sheet. But if you give me an opportunity, you know, I'll show you what I can do. And then one time I hired a lady, and paying a lady, I think ten dollars an hour, working from home, just getting emails from offline. You know, I say go to all these different sites. All these different schools. I'm, I need to email athletic directors. So just get me the emails of the athletic directors from different each different conference. You know because I got a I got a thing called characteruniversity.com for college athletes because I work with college team. So I'm paying late ten dollars an hour. She ain't doing nothing. You sitting at the house going on the computer, going to usf.edu, clicking on athletics, clicking on athletic director copy and pasting the email it's public knowledge but you just doing the lead works so i can save me some time she write me after one day at work uh yeah you know i really feel like i've been an amazing worker and would love to go to twenty dollars an hour <sighs> look for me that was a microcosm of the dating world that's what you're going to experience in the dating world you're going to have you out there it's like you got an application on the market when you ready to meet your husband or your wife. But what you have to realize with anything, you gotta go through 100 no's to find one yes. That's with anything. So you have to expect that. You can't take each one so personal. You can't take rejection personal. I have a quote that says, let your let no's be your vitamin, N-O. In O's, nose, in O's. Now I ain't talking about your nose. I know I'm country. Y'all be like, let your nose be a vitamin. I'm not talking about your nose. Let nose, the word N O. Let no be your vitamin. So that every time you got to tell somebody no, every time you hear no, it's a vitamin. It's making you stronger. Because unless you can manage what you call rejection and go from rejection to rejection without losing enthusiasm you got a long road so you got to relish in it you got to relish in those those rejections you got to be like yes lord thank you you got to shift your mindset instead of being like man i'm never gonna meet anybody man what's wrong with me like oh my goodness like this is so hard like man why doesn't anybody want me i just because i don't want to sleep with them they don't want me Man, that lady in Tony's comments was right. I'm going to be single forever because I don't want to sleep with a man inside of six months or because I'm saving myself until marriage. So I got to be single. Oh, my goodness. Like, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? I'm reading about Apostle Paul and I know he was single. And it's unfair that this day and age, now you want me to be Apostle Lena Paulina? Oh my goodness, like, where's my husband? And you're sitting there and you're getting stressed and you're getting worried and you're breaking down your immune system. You snotty nose, people think you got the 19 because you sniffing and coughing because you're not sleeping well because you your mind broke because you're breaking your body down with your weak mind because you internalizing a grown boy walking off on you. That's a grown boy. He don't know his left from his right. He walk around with two left shoes on. And you mad that a man with two left shoes on leaving you? 
You mad that a man that can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time leaving you? You mad with a man that don't know his left from his right? He don't know his head from his behind. And you taking that as a rich. Oh my goodness. Like, you know, he just ghosted me. And that's how y'all be. He just ghosted. Look, that was a grown boy. You got to shift your mindset and be like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for removing them, Lord. Thank you for removing them expeditiously. Thank you for removing them, expediting the process. Lord, thank you for being expedient in this here dating process and getting them up out of here in a week or less. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you for that. I didn't waste three months of my time. Lord, thank you. I didn't waste six months of my time. Lord, thank you. I ain't waste five, ten years like some of these women. Lord, thank you that after one date, after one date or one phone call, and I first time I tell him no, I ain't got to hear from him no more. Ooh, you need to be shifting your mindset to where when he curse you out without cuss words, and you know how men know how to do that. You know what? I think that is very, very childish. And to be honest with you, it would be hard for me to look in the mirror if I was that childish. I don't even understand how you look in the mirror being so immature. You're going to be single for the rest of your life. He ain't say a single cuss word, but you feel this, this big. This how big you feel. You feel this big. That man ain't say a single curse word. When somebody curse you out without using curse words, you got to get to the point where you can laugh about that. You can call your best friend and say, Oh my goodness, girl, listen. Oh my girl. You girl, he was big mad. Girl, this man was so mad. Girl, this man told me I'ma be single as a splinter in the zoo. Oh my goodness. Now I don't even know what that means. But you have to be able to laugh at it and pick yourself up and not internalize that and, and take that as rejection. When they say rejection is protection, if if that applies to anything, it applies to a situation where a man leaves you, ghosts you, or walks off on you for you having standards. If it applies to anything, it applies to that. You cannot be mad about no sorry, grown, musty, stinking man walking out on your life because you won't sleep with him, because you won't kiss him in the mouth when he's 19 out here, because you won't let him come in your dwelling place or you won't go behind closed doors at his place because you won't come over to his mama house and y'all got to sit in the living room while she locked up in the bedroom because he's still staying with her, talking about she's staying with him. Because you have standards, because he don't have a job and all he want to do is walk around the lake because he can't even afford to buy you a burger from Steak and Shake, so he at the lake. And you done burnt off five pounds on the first two dates because y'all done walk nine miles around the lake because he don't have a job. And so if you don't want to be with a man who does not have a job and he want to get mad about that and he's not looking for no job, that's his problem. That's his problem. See, people going to have to realize that in order to get somebody, you got to have standards. Do not, I'm going to listen to me now. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Do not listen to these old loose booty women in these comments. Do not listen to the old desperate, lonely women in these comments. Do not listen to the old sorry, no good, grown boys in these comments. Cause the men gonna be in there. Oh well, Tony, you know you giving these women a recipe for singleness. Ain't no man gonna, ain't no man gonna go on ten dates with no woman, and he ain't, and he can't kiss in the mile. Ain't no man finna go on no ten dates, and he can't come over to her house. He can't pick her up from her house. Ain't no man about to do that. Listen to me, man gonna do whatever you tell him to do. If that's your husband, if that's your husband, and you want to see, can he do a cartwheel good? He going to be out there. You hear me? When it's your husband, he going to jump through hoops for you. That's what you got to understand. The man for you ain't going to do nothing. The man, I mean, the man that's not for you, he's not going to do anything. He ain't going to tie his laces good for you. 
So you can't be upset when a man walk out of your life, ghost you, whatever y'all calling it today. Casper, the friendly ghost, whatever it is today, you cannot be upset about that. So this is what I need you to do. Sit down and become one with your standards. Know what your standards are and know the difference between standards and preferences. Understand that now. Know the difference between standards and preferences. And you, all this right here, he, he need to be a man of God. That's a standard. I mean, walk like, talk like, I need to feel the spirit. That's a standard. He need to have a job. That's a standard. He can't, he can't curse like a sailor. Now, if he stomp his toe and, and say the D word, you might say you're going to forgive that. Okay. But he curse like a sailor, F word, S word, all that, every, other, every sentence. Okay. He can't curse like a sailor. That's a standard. Because you don't want y'all children to be cursing like that in kindergarten, cussing out the teacher. I, done, I, I used to be a substitute teacher. I done seen it. So that's a standard. He can't smoke. That's a standard. You don't want to be uh, tongue kissing no ashtray. You licking up a whole bunch of ashes while after you done kissed them, and it it literally tastes like you done went to an ashtray and just. Uh. If you don't want to do that, that's a standard. You can't smoke. I don't know. I'm stinking. You no, know, my white wall turning yellow, cause cause you sitting in here smoking, clothes, and so now you holding our newborn and and all the baby pores full of. Your weed now because it's coming out your pores and going into the baby pores. If you don't want somebody to smoke, cur, smoke, get, drink like a fish, those standards, okay? If you don't want to sleep with somebody before marriage, that's a standard. If you don't want somebody in your house, that's a standard. If you don't want to be in somebody else's house, that's a standard. If you don't want to live together before marriage, that's a standard. Anything that have to do with morals, values, your belief system, your personal safety, your personal health, those all standards. Your, your, your future, your financial health, that's a standard. So some of y'all, if you say, listen, and I get it. I always tell y'all, don't judge a man by, his, by how much money he make. Judge him by his character and his ambition. Because if he has character ambition and ambition, he's going to earn money eventually if he has character and, and ambition. But then some some women say, and rightfully so, I give you this, but I'm not talking to this situation when I'm talking about this. Some women say, well, Tony, I'm 45. Well, Tony, I'm 50. Man making $30,000 a year, they, they ain't enough for me. They ain't enough for me. And what does it say about him if he 45, 50 years old, still make $30,000 a year? Okay, in that case, that is a standard because if you say, listen, that ain't enough money to live in my city. And what does it say to me about that man if he's still at an entry level position at 45, 50 and I done climb the ranks and I'm a business owner or I'm a manager or supervisor. I want somebody on my level so that they understand because that's going to show me we got the same amount of character, integrity and ambition. OK, that can be a standard. If, if you, if it's some other associating things in there that shows that his, that you feel like his income is a direct, you know, is directly related to his integrity or his character. And if you look within on a date or two and that's true, then that is a standard. But if it just happens to be let me give you another example. If he runs a nonprofit organization and it's an innocence project helping people who are wrongly convicted and he has to raise money to pay the attorneys to file the motions for these individuals. And this is something he passionate about because his father, his brother, his uncle was wrongfully convicted. And so he's 45 years old and he pays himself from his nonprofit. He pays himself 30,000 because he doesn't want to take too much of their $100,000 budget a year. See, now that's character, that's integrity, and that's purpose. So that's why you can't just have a standard as a set dollar amount because it may not be, you know, a clear representation of who he is as a man or who she is as a woman. 
So you got to understand that. So feel me on this now when you hear me and understand uh, and understand somebody was at my door that you if you set your standards stick by your standards because guess what think about this the higher your standards are the better you're going to get think about if you went think about if and god forbid that 19 jump on you okay and you go to the doctor if the medical field didn't have standards, then guess what? Tom, Dick, and Harry, right off the street corner of being there in a white coat. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what you need? <coughs> uh, yeah, what you need? Okay, yeah, let me, uh, yeah, let me, uh-huh. Let me check your pulse. And you, you at the doctor, let me check your pulse. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, I feel your pulse. Guess what? is standards so because it's standards you got to have you a bachelor's you need to have you got to go to med school after med school you got to go to residency after that i don't know if it's a fellowship then after that then you come in here checking on me telling me what to do you see what i'm saying the higher the standards the better you get so the higher your standards the better options you're gonna have if you come in there and say, well, uh, well, you know, if if we go on a date and, you know, he pays for the date and it was Filet McNon with a lobster tail, yes, I think after that he can get it. Okay, so that means Ted Bundy nephew, Ted Bundy himself, that means Flavor Flay, that mean anybody, anybody can get you and what they can do, take you out, wine you and dine you, give you some wine and uh, a nice meal and, and you on your bike. You on your bike because you don't have standards. You say, okay, well, I'm going to do the 90 day rule. Now, I created the 90 day rule in 2007. It was called the three month rule in 2007 in 2009 steve came out with a book and with the 90 day rule in it okay um how that happened i'm not sure maybe we both had this, this great idea but for me the 90 day rule meant that it take you that if a man will and this was in my my very first book that i wrote when i was 22 years old called what daddy never told his little girl the 90 day rule, what this meant is that if a man will talk to you every day for 90 days without trying to sleep with you and without trying to have you out your comfort zone doing what he wants you to do instead of what you want to do. And in this 90 days, he talked to you every day that that is a real that is somebody that you could take seriously. Because a player is only going to wait 30 days. A real bona fide player is not going to wait longer than 30 days. Talking to you every day. Now, can understand now, it's caveats and nuances in here. Now, the t-shirt might be up under the video. Now, understand what I'm telling you now. And this way y'all go wrong. See, your standard needs to be daily communication because if you okay with talking every other day every three days four days once a week if you okay with that then you will be entertaining a womanizer a player a liar deceiver manipulator and then what will happen is y'all talking monday wednesday friday you don't even hear from them on the weekend and you think because he driving truck because he busy. You don't hear from him on the weekend because that's when his woman in town. Okay. But y'all talking Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, you thinking about him 80% of the day. So now you giving him credit for stuff he didn't even do. 
and you saying you doing the 90 day rule. So at day 91, day 91, you spread eagle. And, but guess what? He only put in 30 days because you was okay talking to him every other day. Or, or however that work out. 45 days because you was okay talking to him every other day because you didn't have your standards in place. So now you giving him something that he didn't even work for because in when he wasn't talking to you, he was talking to his other women. Because if you okay with him talking to you every other day, meaning he call you today, tomorrow he just texts you to death. Then he call you the next day. Then the next day he just texts you to death. And then every now and then he might just text you to death for two days. But you still think y'all got something going on. You ain't got nothing going on. That's a pen pal. That's not, that's not a potential husband. That is a pen pal. And you need to understand that. And so this is the mistake that so many women making is you don't have standards because you're getting desperate and you lonely and you frustrated and you're going from thirsty to dehydrated. And now that you dehydrated, now you willing to put up anything Tom, Dick, or Harry ready to give you. So he come in here and he does reverse psychology. Oh, so you really believe that in 2020, a man is going to wait until marriage to sleep with you? Mm. Now, now, hold on now. Do you honestly believe that? Mm. Like. Now, I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you really believe that in 2020, a man is going to wait until marriage? Now, I'm a good man. I treat women with respect. My mom raised me the right way. But I find it hard to believe that at your age, you've bought into that. Do you listen to those relationship guys online or something? So he coming in and he going to hit you with that reverse psychology. And you and, and now you start to question yourself. And you and now you thinking about loose booty. Loose booty 901 that you saw in the comments. That said, oh, Tony, it is 2020. There are no men that's going to be waiting until marriage today. You lead these women astray. And, and that comment. From Loose Booty 901, pop up, and you you see her screen name, you see a little uh, fake picture, or her little thought booty picture, and you and you just picturing her, and then you picturing her with her man, with her gown on, walking down the aisle, getting married, and now you starting to sweat, and and then you go talking to the guy. Well, 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 well. Yes, I believe it, but you know, I didn't say that beliefs can't change like i'm not that naive like i didn't say that you can't have amazing chemistry and you go there sooner i'm just saying that that is what i would like to do but i didn't say that people can't evolve and change their mind i mean we all have a brain b-r-a-i-n m-i-n-d that we can change like Okay, duh, yes, I understand that. So now you done talk yourself off. You, not, now you done talk yourself down at your standards because he just played on your desperation. Now he just found out you ain't committed to what you said you were committed to. So guess what? So guess what I'm about to do? Now this is what's going on in his mind. This manglish. This is what he's thinking. Guess what I'm about to do, little miss, little missy. I'm about to wind you, dine you, and then I'm going to be flipping you and tossing you. And when I flip you and toss you, then I'm finna Casper the ghost you. You know why? Because you tried to play me like a sucker. You're going to try to tell me that you waiting till marriage and you ain't really about that life. So if I was a good man, if I was a real man, I would have sat up here and waited on your sorry butt until marriage. But you ain't even about that life. You ain't even built like that. 
Because I asked you three questions in three different ways and you done changed your whole story. So yes, ma'am, you about to pay for it. And you know what? He finna do just that. You going to the steakhouse. If you don't eat meat, you going to the vegetarian house. You finna have your nice glass of Pinot Grigio. You finna have you some chocolate covered strawberries. If you're allergic to chocolate and get a headache, he finna give you some, some, some cheese and crackers on a charcuterie board. And right after that, he diving on in there. And he gonna do you one, he gonna do you one. He gonna do you a favor. He gonna ask you, this how he gonna get you. This how, see he got you, he done wind you down, wind you down, he done talk your head off, he done share all his hopes and all his dreams. And because he felt that little bit of doubt about your standards that you thought you believed, that you thought you lived by, because he felt that little bit of doubt, he showed you his representative, he gonna do everything right, okay? And this how he gonna get you. He gonna ask you, can he eat some peach cobbler? Oh yeah. This is what he gonna do to you. Oh yeah. He gonna start kissing on that neck, sucking on that ill load. He gonna work his way to that peach cobbler. And 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 here you you thinking, oh, he wanna please me. Oh, he wanna serve me and eat peach cobbler. Well, now you're hearing the videos. Well, Tony did not say that he can't eat peach cobbler. He said, do not be on your back for intercourse. But he didn't mention this. Yeah, you ain't supposed to be doing nothing, nothing in that area. Nothing sexual at all. You supposed to be away from there, but see, that's how so many men get y'all. He come and make you think he want to serve you. So you thinking, oh, wow, he's subservient. Oh, wow, he's a giver. Oh, wow, he's a lover. Oh, if he offering that, well, ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of that. But then guess what? He knows that's going to get you right where he needs you to be. And then, dun, dun, dun. Finna put his Superman cape on and finna do what he do and then finna fly right on out your life. Why? Because you didn't have your standards in place. Because you let Loose Booty 901 talk you out of your standards in the comments because she didn't have no standards and she married. But what she don't know is her husband might be cheating on her. What she don't know is she could be the exception to the rule. And in this day and time, at this day and time, you need to have more standards than a little bit. You need to have more standards than a little bit. You hear me? Because these some tough times. This, this, cause now, okay, it was just, you worrying about catching mono. Then after that, you worrying about catching the H, the hurt. Then you worrying about catching the heels. Okay. Right now. It's the stakes higher now. Mess around and be an asthmatic and catch that 19. Because he out here kissing everything. Because he out here with no social distance. Mess around and be an asthmatic. Because and you don't want to have standards. You want to be in this house. He want to be in your house and we supposed to be quarantined. We supposed to be social distant. But because you let Loose Booty 901 come in the comments, tell you that you crazy for listening to me trying to help you reinforce some standards. You about to risk it all. For what? For a grown boy. Let me help you understand this in closing, now. Huh? In closing. Piano, give me a little, give me a little something. Now this is the benediction. This in closing. Now listen to me. Let me help you understand something. A grown man, he wanna take his time. You hear me? A grown man wanna take his time. A grown man wanna get you to the point to where you wanna ask him for the microphone. 
then he got to tell you the microphone ain't in service right now. I'm saving this for after our wedding ceremony. Then you could sing karaoke. But until then, it's unplugged. That's what a grown man want. A grown man, he want to respect your space so that you know he's not praying on you. But instead, he's praying for you. A grown man, he wants you to feel comfortable. He wants you to feel secure. A grown man, now, now granted, they ain't growing on trees now. The man that I speak of is not growing on trees now. He, he ain't going to be nine out of ten men. He, he going to be one out of ten. Okay, depending on where you live, he might be one out of 25. Okay. So that's why you have to let rejection be your protection, let no be your vitamin, and you ha you cannot lose enthusiasm from one man to the next man. You got to go, that next man, you got to have that same pep in your step, that same pep in your step, that same bubble in your voice. You got to have that from man to man. And because you don't want to, Go from man to man, and you going grown boy, grown boy, grown boy, grown boy, grown boy, grown boy, and then you come to grown man, husband, and then you get the husband, and now your demeanor is what you going Oh, that's cute. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, you're a pharmacist? Mm. Ah, yeah. So basically, you're a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. And he like, huh? No, oh, I'm a pharmacist. I own a pharmacy. And, oh, yeah. Street pharmacist? Okay, yeah. I, I've heard this one. Yeah, continue. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to come to your husband and now you done let all the grown boys steal your energy, steal your enthusiasm. Now hear the man for you because you got to go through a bunch of no's to get to the yes, not a man for you. You don't even want to hear what he got to say because you done dealt with so many grown boys that now you thinking, Ain't no good men. No, it's good men out there. But what you got to understand, anything worth having, it's going to take some time. It's You're going to have to work for it. And, and that's in any industry. In, in when in, If you recruiting in, in corporate, in sports, if you're trying to hire, if you're trying to get hired, you're trying to get a job, you're trying to get a sponsorship, it is commonplace to go through a bunch of no's a bunch of rejection before the one yes. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you. So you got to get used to that and you're going to have to rinse, wash, rinse, dry yourself off, get right back in the mix of things and go back right to that next, to that next situation, to this next man with the same energy. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And so what did you think about that? You need to have that same energy from man to man. And then guess what? It's a padlock on E. You hear me? I just popped my wrist. It's a padlock on him. So that any man he trying to get in there, because he trying to get you, nope. And he, he there like this, he's struggling. Then guess what? This is what he going to do. And you just... See ya. Okay, Lord, mm, save us another one. Okay, we back at it. And then you get right on back out there. And that's what you got to do. You cannot lose enthusiasm. You can't get beat down, broke down, and be hurting because you meeting grown boy after grown boy. So listen, sit down, write your standards. Now, if you go to writing your standards and you got a short book, okay, you're doing the most. Okay, you're doing the most. 
It's need to be like 10 or less things that it could be internalized and in your spirit. Okay. These are principle based, moral value based. Okay. Health and hygiene based. These are your standards that now you don't go too deep. If you got you an ebook by the time you finish writing your standard, you're doing the most. Okay. Stop doing the most, but have you some standards internalize them get them in your spirit so you ain't got to take your list with you when you go on your date after we come through this here so you whipping out your list okay let me see okay oh yes do you smoke okay okay oh yes do you do you get drunk okay do you live with your mom okay you don't want to have your list it need to be in your heart the way you can have a normal conversation to where when you sit down so yeah, are you ready for the NBA to be back? Yeah, you know, but it's like sometimes I get ready to watch the game. My mom, she watching her stories. So now, normal conversation, you just learn he live with his mom. You see what I'm saying? Instead of having to ask him, so do you live alone? You didn't have to ask him that. You just have a normal conversation. It's going to let you know. Well, yeah, but sometimes me and my roommate, I love the NBA, but sometimes me and my roommate be fighting over the TV. So, oh, okay, yeah. So you got a room. So you got a roommate. Oh, okay. Well, how old is how old is he? You know that. Why is he acting so immature? Oh, well, actually, you know, it's a she, and she just yeah, you know, she loved to watch that new show on Netflix, and she's like, oh, it's a she. Oh, okay, that's mm, that's interesting. Co um, co-ed roommate. Well, well, yeah, actually, we got three kids together, and it just she just ain't got nowhere to live right now, so. I'm letting her and them stay with me. So, I mean, you know how it is. Oh, yeah, I know how it is. Yeah. And so, normal conversation, he going to tell you everything he you need to know. And you don't have to interrogate him. You ain't got to pull out your list because you know your standards. And you cool, calm, and collected. You have not lost enthusiasm. You're going to hear everything you got to hear. And when you figure out that it's not for you, you got to be a boss about it. When you go to that big job and you ask them for that raise, uh, unfortunately at this time we aren't offering raises, but you know, keep working hard. We, 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 we know that's in your future. They ain't scared to tell you. They ain't be around no bush with you. So that's how you got to be with a man. Hey, great to hear from you. You know, I was thinking and you know, I, I just don't think this is gonna work and I don't wanna waste your time. You know, I don't want to waste my time and it's just a lot going on out here. And I just need some, I just need to recenter and just be to myself. And I just, it's not going to be a fit. And I don't want to block anything on your end or, or on my end in case, you know, things change tomorrow. But it was great knowing you, you know, and I wish you the best, honestly. And then he's going to be like, uh, okay. All right. Now he might curse you out without cursing. He might curse you out with curse words or he might say or he might hang up on you or he might say, OK, well, all right, you have a nice one. Now he going to cry in the car, but you can't worry about that. You you on your mission. And that's all. And this vice versa, fellas. If you listen to this, fellas, say, oh, do a video for the men. Same thing go for the man. Just invert it. It just 95 percent of my listeners are women. So just like the Bible say he. It say that because it's talking to mankind and God made Adam first. So it say he, it don't keep saying he or she. So y'all hush with that and just invert the information and use it for you too, fellas. Okay. Hey, this is Tony Gasson. God bless y'all. Y'all stay safe out here. If you got to this point, put be blessed in the comments or put be blessed. I made it because some of y'all just put be blessed for the video even start. Hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.